So I just finished redesigning my website, wagepirate.com, and I've just published it and put it live. Now, there's a couple of different tweaks that I need to make to, to optimize it and clean up some things, but the majority of the work is done. Now, one of the reasons that I wanted to go out and redesign my website was because I wanted to explore some new tools. And the best way to learn a tool is to go out and recreate an entire website using it. So a couple, a couple of tools that I wanted to use there was the Oxyprops CSS framework for Bricks Builder. It has some really cool features that drew me to it. So for example, it has a built-in ability to go out and design a dark mode for your website. And it's basically all automated. So you just build your website uh, you know, as you go along and then you add the toggle and the header and it basically just works without you really having to do anything. But I will leave that for its own separate video. And another tool that I wanted to go out and practice was using the BEM or BEM naming convention for CSS classes. Now, if you've never used BEM before, I hadn't either. And it's really just a way, as it says here, for you to go out and organize and name your CSS classes so that it's easier to maintain. And one of the main features or the benefits that I see people talk about is that it's quite commonly adopted in teams. So a team member can go in and take over and understand the CSS code that you've written because you have a standardized naming convention for your CSS classes. So with that said, it's obviously something that you want to know how to do to work within a team, especially when you're a developer. And so it's something that I want to go out and have some experience in using. So I did want to try and adopt that for rebuilding my website. Now, we're not going to go through exactly how BEM works because I'm sure a lot of people watching this video already know how it works or they have somewhat of an understanding. But the main thing that I wanted to cover in today's video is the following. Let's say I was going out and I had inside this section this container and then inside that container I have these items here and they're what we're going to call cards and if I click on this card the block so block element and modifier so BEM the block is going to be card hyphen skill and then inside that block I have two elements I have this element here a heading and then I have this one which is rich text and you can see from the CSS classes that I've used so card hyphen skill is the main block and then inside here card hyphen skill underscore underscore heading that's the element heading and then if I click here the second element is description so knowing that let's just say this card over here which has the same CSS naming conventions so the block is card hyphen skill and then inside there card hyphen skill underscore heading and then here card hyphen skill underscore underscore description. Let's say this card here, what if I wanted to make this a darker version? So, you know, all the rest are blue, but I really want this one to pop and I want it to be a, a black background maybe with white text. So because I had never used BEM before, I wasn't sure what, like how to go and do that inside a Bricks Builder, you know, where I needed to add the CSS and what that sort of looked like that was gonna make it easy to maintain going forward. Because obviously if we're using BEM, we're thinking about maintainability long-term. And so I'd, I wanted to make sure that I was doing it properly. And I found that the following is the best way to go out and do that for my personal, from my personal experience. So let's go ahead and recreate these from scratch and uh, you'll see what I mean. So let's get rid of card hyphen skill there. And for this one down here, I'm gonna get rid of that as well. And then let's go ahead and remove the other classes and we'll build it up from scratch. So uh, this one here, we'll get rid of that. And then this one here, we'll get rid of that. And then I'll also click on this second card here and we'll remove them from there. So the heading, we're gonna get rid of that. And then the rich text will get rid of that. So coming back here, let's go ahead and set up this initial card here. And then we'll go and set up a variation over here where it's a darker version. So here for the block, the main parent item, let's just keep it simple and just give it the CSS class of card. And then we'll add some styling to this global CSS class. So let's go to style and we'll go to border and we'll go to here and let's give it a rounded corner. So what's really cool with the Oxyprops plugin is I can right click and then I get access to a UI that allows me to apply some CSS custom properties here. So let's just say I pick four there and then I just link it all the way around. Now it's linked all the way around. And then let's go to layout and then let's add some padding. So I can just right click and let's just say four and we'll put it all the way around. So that looks pretty good. And then let's also collapse that and let's go back to here and let's add a shadow. So I'll go into here, 
quite a large uh, drop shadow here. And then for the color, we could come into here and just select any color. Uh, so I might just go this color there. And I think let's leave that at there. So now if we click back into here, this global CSS class card, we've added these styling properties. So now let's go into the heading here and we're gonna add a CSS class. So block was card and then we'll do underscore underscore and then the element we'll do heading like that and we'll press enter. And for this demonstration, I'm not gonna go and add any styling to the heading element, but I've just found that going through and building my website using BEM, you can never foreshadow uh, exactly how you're gonna build your website. So I found it's always better just to apply CSS classes to every element. So while we're not gonna apply any styling there, it's just good habit to do that. And then let's go down to here and let's add another one. So we'll do card underscore underscore. And I just do uh, description, so desk, press enter. And here for this class, we're gonna to go to layout and then for the margin top, we'll go here and we'll add, let's just say one there. So now that we've gone and made our CSS classes, let's go and apply them to this card over here. And then I'll show you how we can go and create a darker version of that, a variant. So let's go ahead and back into here. So now we have it selected. For the block, let's go and apply our card CSS class. So I'm gonna search for that. And down here, there it is, so I'll apply it. And then let's go to the heading and we'll go up to here and we'll do card. And we wanna find card underscore underscore heading. So there it is there. And then for the rich text, we'll come and apply that as well. So going down card, there desk and press enter. So now we've gone and applied all the CSS classes from here over to the elements over there. So if we go over and try and make this a darker version now, Let's click back on the second item there and we need to add a mod modifier. So if we go back to this heading, see how we had card underscore underscore and then heading. So block two underscores and then the element to add the block element to add a modifier where an element has two underscores before it, a modifier has two dashes. So let's go back here and we're gonna add a modifier. So, so we're gonna do card and then to modify it, we'll do two hyphens and we'll do dark and press enter. And now that we're editing this CSS class, what I found is let's get out of that and let's go down to CSS here and we can start applying some custom CSS here. And what we don't wanna do is do dot card hyphen hyphen dark like that and then go into here and make background and do something like black. While that might work, what we can also do is use this root here. So instead of doing card hyphen hyphen dark, we can just write root. And what happens is when it goes to generate this page, because we're currently editing the card hyphen hyphen dark CSS class, that just gets, the word root just gets replaced with that. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and save that. And we go to the front end and reload the page and go down. You can see that that's taking effect. And if we right click and go inspect and then go down and have a look at what's going on with the CSS, you can see here we have our card hyphen hyphen dark CSS class. And then Bricks Builder has got that class and added background black there. So where we had root in our Bricks Builder, root got replaced with card hyphen hyphen dark, which is what's there. So that's what I mean by root. And that's what it says there. Use root to target the element wrapper. So at runtime, whatever we're editing, which is this CSS class, root gets replaced with this CSS class, which is what's happening there. And so I thought that was interesting because I don't think I knew that or I was reminded when I was building this website because I always thought when you were using root, if we get out of editing the CSS class, I thought you could only use root for editing the actual element, but it actually applies to CSS classes as well. So that's what I thought was really cool. That's what I wanted to show you in today's video. So if we go back here and we apply that CSS class again and we add root there, let's go ahead and just make these uh, heading and the text there white. So root background black like that. And then what we can do is say root and then we can target the children within there. So it would be dot card underscore underscore heading. And then inside there, we could make that color white. And now that's white there. And then we can also do root dot card underscore underscore and description, which is now targeting the text there. 
And then we could go ahead and do color and we could make this like a light gray color like that. So now if we save this and go back and reload on the front end, you can see now that's taken effect. And if we click here, card, dark, it has our black background. And then if we click on the elements inside there, card hyphen hyphen dark, card underscore underscore heading white and go down here, card hyphen hyphen dark, card description, color this. And so it's replaced root with this CSS class and it's gone ahead and applied that on the front end. And what's really cool now is we could go to this one and we could just apply that CSS class. So card hyphen hyphen dark and then go there. And now that has all changed and it's applied it there. And if we ever wanna edit that, we're just editing the CSS class. And instead of the heading being a white, we might want to make it a, a darker shade of gray. So we could go, so we could do that. And now it's a darker shade of gray and it's applied everywhere. Now, the next thing that you're probably wondering is how is that CSS output on the front end? So let's go and see how that works. So back here, let's go and inspect element and we'll go down and you can see there's our card dark class. And if we pull that across, it says it's on the index. Now, whenever you see that, it means that it's not actually its own separate CSS file. It's being output in line on the page. So if we click here, we can see what that looks like. So there it is there. So it's by breakpoint, and this is how Bricks is outputting it on the page there. And if we go up, we can also confirm that it's inline. It just says here, style. So it's an inline style tag, and the style tag is inline hyphen CSS. So this is all our custom CSS classes there. Now what's worth noting is that that shows that those CSS classes are being put in line. But if I go back here and I go to bricks and I go to settings and then we go to performance and we go down, the CSS loading method is external files. So it says based on that, it should actually be going and putting our custom CSS classes into their own CSS file unless maybe our custom classes are, in, are output in line, but then everything else is generated in its own CSS file, uh, which might be the case, because if we do regenerate CSS files here, you can see that it does do our color palette and then it does it by post ID. So these are Bricks templates here. So for each template, it's going and generating the Bricks CSS file for that template. And then you can also see it does it on a per page basis there. And that's, and that's shown by post ID. So if I go back to the home page and we right click and go inspect element to see the ID of my home page, which is 17. If we go back here, we can see that it's actually creating a CSS file for my home page. So it is minified, but I'm not sure if we can go and see what's actually output in there. So let's do 17.css, I think it was, or so post hyphen 17. So there it is there. So let's click into that and let's try and find our card hyphen. So it doesn't seem to output our custom CSS classes there uh, in that file. So I definitely, uh, maybe that's a separate video trying to see how that works. But judging from what that's showing me there is that any custom CSS classes are output in line on the page. And then the others that are generated when you're using Bricks Builder are written to their own CSS file but I will look at that in an upcoming video. But jumping back here, let's create a new page. So uh, new BM test and we'll go publish and then publish and then edit with bricks. And then here, let's add a section with a container. And then in here, let's add, uh, or we can actually just copy from our homepage. So let's go back to our homepage and we'll go edit with bricks. And then from here, I wanna copy this section. So I'll copy and let's go back to our new page. I might just delete that. So remove all and I'll paste that in there. So let's save that. So here we are and let's go and see where that CSS code has output here. So let's inspect and there it is there. So it is in line there as well. And it looks like our custom CSS classes are output in line there. And then we have a separate CSS file that is generated based on what else we do inside of Bricks Builder. So I'm wondering if this is just how it works when you're logged out. So let's just triple check. So here I am logged out of my live website. Let's go down and here are some cards. So let's right click and inspect and just have a look. So there, so here's our custom CSS classes on my live website. So a little bit different to the names that we just looked at in our test install, but C hyphen card is the block and you see it's indexed. So it's definitely output in line 
if I click on this, we can see that these are all my custom CSS classes there and they are output on the page in line. And I definitely have that setting inside of Bricks Builder under performance set to create CSS as external files. So reading through this, it does look like my custom CSS does get output in line. And then I must create a separate CSS file for everything else you do in Bricks Builder when you're moving and dragging and uh, setting styles in line on elements inside of Bricks Builder. But coming back into here, that's just what I learned from redoing my website and how to go and take a block here like card, add an element uh, modifier, like making it a dark version, and then under style and CSS, using root when you're editing that CSS class. And then because you're using BEM, it's very easy to remember, I find, what these elements are here. You don't really have to click into there and go heading and then click and go back. You sort of, you do remember what they are there. And so writing CSS like this is very uh, easy, I've found to do it. And it seems to work really, really well. If you're using BEM, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is that how everyone's doing it? I just thought it was just something that I wanted to document that I learned uh, when I was rebuilding my website last week. I'll end this video now. Here are some other videos on the screen that YouTube thinks that will help you as well. And I'll see you guys in those videos.